Hey everybody, we are back with James Lewis' Express Lane, bringing you the top 10 DLC that I've played. A couple of times I, well, not because the expansions and, well, obviously I don't want to spoil it, but some of these games everyone's played, everyone's heard of, everyone's loved. Some of these you might be going, huh? Never even heard of that game. But... Some of the game probably a lot of people have heard of. XCOM. Enemy Unknown, then Enemy Within. Enemy Within helps expand on the original game as DLC should. Some DLC is pay $14.99 for Horse Armor. This is not like that. This is not Horse Armor. This is new characters, new technology, new aliens, new levels. New, new, new. Reason it's only number 10... And actually, this might be the easiest one. It's like seven of them, like, this should be higher. Well, no, that should be higher. Well, no, that should be higher. They should all be higher. This one, no. Because on the PS4, if you get the game, you have to refuse the patch. If you get the patch, the game crashes every single time at the base defense. Every single time, there's no way around it. If you get the patch, it will crash there. If you don't get the patch, the game will crash elsewhere. Elsewhere, sometimes. Not always. So you have to decide between bugs and issues and some crashes maybe throughout the game. Or being unable to beat the game because it crashes every single time at the base defense. No matter what. Terrible. Next... Dead Nation, Road of Devastation. I love Dead Nation. Great game. Played it way more than I probably should have. Both on PS3, where I got the Platinum, and on PS4, where I was doing some co-op with uh, Goober over the internet. It's also got couch co-op, so you and a friend can sit there next to each other and play. Something a lot of games lack nowadays. But, I get that this is not going to be... This is not going to be game of the year. This is not going to be winning awards. This is not going to be, dude, man, I just spent all night playing this game. But it should be. You should be spending all night playing this game. Because the Road of Devastation, instead of following the story, is game show style. Where you start with 5,000, 10,000, however much gold. Then you leave the little base. And if you go straight, you get health. Or money. If you go right, you get armor or score. If you go left, you get guns or items. It's like, well, I'm going to go right. No, I'm going to go straight. Get me some money. You finish level one. Congratulations. Start off in the base. You leave the base. Straight is now closed because you went there last time. Do you go for armor and or points? Or do you go for weapons and items? Well, I'm going to go left. I want I don't want just the rifle. I want the shocker. All right, well, go that way. Congratulations, you beat level 2. Start off in the base. You go forward. Well, left path is now closed because you did it last time. But straight is reopened. You go straight. I'm going to go get me some more cash. You go through. Beat level 3. Start off in the base. Alright, you leave. Straight is now closed. You go left. Ah, uh, don't want mines or don't want turrets. Because turrets are not in the main game. Turrets are only in the DLC. It's like, you know what? I want some turrets. Those are nice. I, I really like using those. So I'm going to go left again. Beat level 4. Now you start in the base. You leave. Let's now closed. Do you go straight or do you go right for armor or points? And why did I suddenly go blurry? And we are back. Yay, Vegas Pro editing. Anyways, that'll be all for this one. Next, number 8. The Last of Us Left Behind. This one was kind of controversial because, what? Ellie is, is, is what? But, it was, this entire DLC was referenced to in the main game. Talking about how she got bit, how she was with her friend. It doesn't really introduce anything new. Just builds on the story, which is great. But it's kind of short. It's like, what? Hour and a half, two hours, maybe? It just... But it builds on the main game, which is what I wanted a DLC. 
It's not horse armor. It's not, oh, here's a pet that follows you along and does absolutely nothing. It's not, congratulations, you spent $14.99. You just leveled up your character once. To level them up again, that'll be $19.99. Oh, you level them up again? Then that'll be $24.99 to level them up again with money. No, it's an actual game. It's just kind of short. And again, kind of controversial with reveal for Ellie. I didn't care. Great, gives her more character. I like it. But a lot of people hated that part. And again, it was kind of short. Mm. And once you play it through once, there's no replay value. Unlike Road of Devastation, where you can just play over and over again. Maybe have a friend come over or play online and co-op together. There's no replay in this one. But it is still amazing. Visual, audio, gameplay is great. Again, like I said, the majority of these games, or well, DLCs, this one should be higher. Now if I move that one higher, I gotta drop that one. But that one can't be dropped. That's, that one should be higher. They should all be higher. Next. Horizon Zero Dawn Into the Frozen Wilds. First I thought it was Canada because it looks just like Canada. I was like, no, 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 it's just Montana. <laughs> You find Yellowstone. You find the Hoover Dam. It's a giant area. Many, many hours of gameplay put into it. You get new skills you can learn. New weapons. New enemies. The Fire Bears are such bullshit. Fuck the Fire Bears. But again, you get new story. New areas. New enemies. New weapons. New skills. New story. Just so many hours some DLC is just yeah garbage this totally worth it I actually bought the DLC for this before I had the actual game installed it's like oh to download this DLC you gotta you know like install the original game first I'm like oh all right tear out the plastic packaging put it in there that's how confident I was in this DLC and in the game itself it's like I don't have the game installed. I've never even played the game yet I'm gonna buy the DLC Totally worth it. Get it. Next. <sighs> Man, just, again, it's like, all oh, these should be higher, but they can't all be higher. Mass Effect 2, the DLC. Mass Effect 3 and 1, like, they, like, they all have DLCs, but I really enjoyed the DLC in Mass Effect 2 the most. Got all of it with buying it on the PS3 when it came out. Because the PS3 version came with all the DLC, Plus stuff that wasn't in the Xbox version. Totally worth it. If you enjoy the Mass Effect series, this you've although you've probably already played it. If you've not played a Mass Effect series, play one, play two, and the game there. Do not play three, do not play Andromeda. <laughs> Kinda sad to say. But if you do get one and two, get the DLC for them. They they add characters, they add whole new planets, missions. And they just add so much to it. Which, again, some DLC is just, yay, you got horse armor. Not this. This will give you hours and hours and hours of enjoyment out of it. Next. You're probably going, what is that from? That is from Dragon Age. The first one, not Inquisition or two. The DLC for this, there's multiple DLCs. My favorite was Shay the Golem. She is hilarious. But all of it is worth it. If you're not playing the Dragon Age series, it's on PS3, Xbox, 360. Probably still on PC, I think. So, you can, if you have any of those consoles or a PS or a PC, check it out. Get the DLC. You will not be disappointed. The main campaign is this massive quest. This adds even more. It's like, I like chocolate. Here's more chocolate. Wait, here's even more better chocolate. Some of this chocolate is actually better than the main chocolate. I just... Ah, it's great. I've spent so many hours playing this. Get it. Ah, next. Bloodborne. Haven't been the DLC yet. I only that I only have Orphan of Cost left. 
And as Dante Crisis will tell you, I'm way overleveled. But it doesn't matter. You could probably be maxed out. You'll still get your ass kicked if you suck. Like like I do. Sorry. But Bloodborne, the old hunters, takes what worked in the original game and improves on it. Some DLC is just, alright, it's the exact same thing as the original game. Oh, what was it? There's been a couple games where they got yelled at because the DLC was already included with a disc. When you buy the $4.99, $9.99, whatever for the DLC, all those will give you a code to unlock the DLC that was already on the disc. This was not already on the disc, thankfully. Or if you get digital, obviously. But anyways, this was not originally on there. This has improved set pieces, improved weapons, improved AI, just better in every way, shape, and form. It's Mind you, the main game? 9 out of 10, easy. But they just took, like, right, what worked? This. What didn't work? That. Well, we'll get rid of that, build on this, and make that. Bloodborne, the old hunters. Again, this is coming from probably the worst Bloodborne player ever. Totally worth getting. <laughs> I know what a lot of you are thinking. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, The Legend of Dead Cal, and the Teeth of Kronos, I think it was called. Kronos? Teeth of Kronos, I'm pretty sure it was called. A lot of people never even heard of Kingdoms of Amalur, let alone actually played it. That was their mistake. Played it on the PS3. Loved it. It is a better Final Fantasy game than all three Final Fantasy 13s combined. There's several scenes I'm like, dude, this is straight out of a Final Fantasy game. But it's not. It is Kingdoms of Amular Reckoning. And the DLC, especially this one, is just builds upon it. You gotta be, yeah, probably a good 60% way through the game. Before you can even unlock this one. Get on a ship. You go to an island. Big island. New areas. New things to learn. New keeps to conquest. New enemies to come across. New story. Again like a lot of these DLCs have been. It just takes the story. And builds upon it. And in some ways here and there. Improves upon it. So many people didn't play this game. That the company went under. But. They've been bought by someone else now. So hopefully we get a Kings of Amalur 2 or Reckoning Remastered with all the DLC attached to it for PS4 and Xbox One and PC and just anything else. Switch. Oh man, that'd be great. Having this game on the go. Awesome. And it's just, I'm just disappointed that so many people never even heard of this game, let alone played it. And you should. It is a great Final Fantasy game. If it was a Final Fantasy game, It'd probably be top five all time. It is that good. So the DLC just makes it even better. Get it, if you can. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, what is this? Da -da -da, number two. Diablo Reaper of Souls. And Diablo Lord of Destruction. The DLC for Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction. Act 5. New enemies. New levels, new items, just new everything. But, not just that. The company that made it continued to release patches that upgraded stuff, updated things, added new items, especially with online. The online went from, alright, you play with your friends, do the story mode. You're done. They added in, you unlock special items only online from certain bosses. When you have them all together, you go back to the old Tristram, put those items together in the Hirage Cube, and you release Uber Diablo, Uber Bale, Uber Mephisto. And it had to be online because no one person would be strong enough to beat these guys. It's insane just how powerful all the Ubers are. But they also drop really good items you can't get anywhere else. And then Diablo 3, you get another Act 5. You get new bosses, you get new characters. And also, um, Necromancer. Necromancer is probably my second favorite behind the Barbarian in Diablo series. 
And he's a DLC character in Diablo 3. Don't know why he wasn't part of the main game. Maybe he doesn't have time, but... Oh, every January, they unleash Diablo 1. No joke. In Diablo 3, if you have expansion pack and all that on the PS4 or probably Xbox One and PC and all that, every year, they unleash Tristram, the original Diablo 1. It goes back to the old style graphics. It has same like the exact same levels, exact same monsters. You fight the butcher, you fight the skeleton, like you it is the exact it is the literal Diablo 1 just in Diablo 3. It, they didn't even charge anything for that. That was free. They do the special event every January for free. Just amazing. The amount of time, effort they put into the DLCs and other stuff like this where it was free. God, I love the Diablo series. And so the expansion packs just add even more to it. And again, like I said with the Diablo 2, like they kept adding on stuff to it, adding in new rune words, new items. Like, oh yeah, we're going to unlock this. You can't forget the cow level, obviously, in Diablo 2. But they just added more to it. And then in Diablo 3, you get the Reaper of Souls expansion pack. You get Necromancer. And then you get stuff like the Trishram event every January. It is just so much that they put into these games. And then they add more. Better. Cooler. Just random stuff like that. No other reason then. Yeah, we can. Now, what could possibly be number one? I mean, all these games. Alright, except for the bugs. XCOM enemy within good. Run of Devastation, good. Especially if you're a fan of the top down thumbstick style shooters. Last of Us, Left Behind, a little short, adds on to the story. Great visual, audio, gameplay, great, great, great. Horizon, Zero Dawn, Frozen Wilds, huge area, new monsters, new items, new skills. Just great. Mass Effect 2. Build upon that with new areas, new monsters, new everything. Just build, build, build more into what is already good. Dragon Age. Just their DLC. Especially, I love Shay. Shay is hilarious. There's one point you went somewhere. She, she's a golem, but she was frozen as a statue for a while. So she hates birds. Like, you into one area, there's like some birds on the ground. She immediately runs over to try to stomp on them because she hates birds. It's hilarious. Just ah, oh, there's just so much to Dragon Age. First of all, Dragon Age itself, great game, play it. DLC adds even more to it. Bloodborne. You guys have been watching me get my ass beat at this game. So worth it. And the Bloodborne old the old hunters just adds even more to it. Ah, huh, look at that. Kings of Amalur, Reckoning, The Legend of Dead Kill. And the Tear of Kronos, again, top five Final Fantasy game. And it's not even a Final Fantasy game. It was made by a baseball player. All right, well, he hired people to do it, but still. Diablo, Reaper of Souls, Diablo, Lord of Destruction, special events, special online only stuff, just so much to it. So what could possibly be number one? Dun, dun, dun. The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Spanish Pack, Blood and Wine, and Heart of Stone. Also, they also released uh, like 16 different, like smaller ones. Like, oh, right, here's some more armors, weapons. Oh, here's another character. Like just smaller, most people call them patches, but they called them DLCs. They probably should have just been called patches, but Blood and Wine, Heart of Stone. They're games in their own right. Let alone being part of The Witcher 3. Witcher 3 may be one of the best RPGs I've ever played. I've played so many over the years. This may in fact be one of the best RPGs I've ever played. And not just because of the choices. Because a lot of RPGs offer choices that aren't really choices. This game actually offers you choices that have impact are real choices you decide you are Geralt you decide 
Do I kill the succubus because they're succubus and they kill some guards? Or do I stop? Do I listen? Do I hear her side of the story? Do I then believe her? I've been hearing people bitching about this whorehouse doing better for the past six months and no one knows why. And yet that night was the first night she ever killed anyone. Hmm. Maybe she's telling the truth that she just got a little too drunk that night. Wasn't careful. Got cornered and defended herself. You know what? I'll let her go. But others won't. Others will just go, there she is, kill her. Others will listen to her and go, yeah, that's all well and true, but you're a succubus, die. It's just, and of course the visuals, oh my, oh. The rain, storm, weather effects are amazing. There's just so much going on. I just, I cannot praise this, I cannot praise this game enough. 10 out of 10 is not good enough for this game. 11 out of 10 might be good enough for this game. Especially with the expansions. The expansions are... Ah! The game itself... Oh, but with the expansions... Ah. <laughs> There's just no way to describe just how great this game is. Including the DLCs. If you have Witcher 3, you have to have the DLCs. There's no if ands, or buts about it. You have to have the DLCs. Just saying. <laughs> but, what are some of your favorite DLCs? Honestly, these are just the ones that I've played. There's plenty of DLC out there that I've never played from games I've never played. Or maybe I played the game, but I just, eh, I don't really need a DLC for this, do I? Mm. I just, I want to hear from you guys, as always. The more I hear from you guys, the better. I like the interaction. Obviously, I'm not going to be like some people and, you know, ban comments, which is fucking stupid. But I will say, Dark Side Phil inspired me to do this list because he was bitching about the Spider-Man DLC. Eh, all DLC is garbage. There has never been a single good piece of DLC ever. All DLC should be banned. It's like, really? Really? All DLC is bad? All DLC is garbage? Don't get me wrong. Some of it is horse armor. That adds absolutely nothing to the game. Some of it is microtransaction-y. But others, like those I just listed, are amazing. And again. Oh. This could have been number one. 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 They they all, all except for maybe this one and this one could have been number one. And this one right here could have been top five. Because like it's like, uh, I gotta make a choice. Where do I put you on your list? It's like, all right, well, I'll drop you a little bit because you're short. I'll drop you a little bit because you're just not everyone's style of gameplay. Definitely dropping you because of the bug issue that the... Mind you, the people who made the game know about the issue. They've never fixed it. They've never fixed the issue. They know about it. They just don't care you guys but yeah so it's like oh, you could be top five you could be number one you could be number one you could be number one number one number one number one number one number one ah oh hey <laughs> i forgot about that picture anyways so again what do you guys think what do you guys say what should one of these been higher should they been lower should i've had one that oh and then again if i didn't play i obviously gonna have it on the list so what would your list be? What would you add to this list? What would you take off? Let me know in the comments down below because as always, like, subscribe, comment down below and have a wonderful day.